This slide demonstrates the steps of conducting the literature review and provides some examples for you to start with the literature review. You can take this as a reference for the start and as you go along with the literature review, you will find your own ways to complete the literature review. The process of the literature review normally started with searching and collecting the source. The main source that you're going to refer for the literature reviews are the journal's papers, the conference papers, textbooks, books, standards and others. You will need to know the natures of different types of publications and you will have to use them wisely. Normally, the journal's papers and conference papers provide the latest information regarding the technological development. By observing the dates of the publications, you are able to see the evolutions of the knowledge from then to now and you can easily gauge the latest development within the field of the study. As for the books and textbooks, the information and the knowledge provided will be slightly older, which is more established and has been proven throughout the history. These information can be used as the strong fundamentals for a topic that you would like to discuss. The standards or code of practice normally provide you some standard procedures and the guides for you to conduct the experiment or to conduct the study. You can take them as a guide for you to carry out your research in a rigorous manner so that the research methodology will yield reliable results for your discussions and findings. Now you would like to search and collect for the sources. You can search through this bibliographical database where you can find a lot of journals papers from their database. There are so many databases with journals which is owned by established publishers and also some higher learning institutions. For those related to engineering, these are among the famous databases such as the Science Dialect, Taylor and Francis, Springer and others. Some of these databases require subscriptions by your institutions and some of the papers is actually open access. To get the open access paper is easy as it is free for the access. However, there are also papers that require subscriptions of your institutions or you will need to pay for those journal's papers. It will be good if you check with your institutions whether do they subscribe all these database. In the case that you need some papers which actually require payment, there are still ways for you to get those papers. You may ask around among your colleagues, how do you get those papers? It is worth mentioning that Google Scholar is also a good search engine for the journal's papers. Its coverage is quite broad by typing the right keywords for the studies that you are interested of. The Google Scholar can help you to trace a lot of journal's papers which is relevant. You may want to search for the journals published by a lot of higher learning institutions. I guess most of the established university, they would like to have their own published house for the journal's papers. You may simply search through the top universities within your country and normally they have those journal's papers published at least twice a year. Let's say now you have acquired some of the good publications which is relevant to your field of study. You would like to search for more of the relevant studies. You have searched through many databases and you have found quite a number of them. You might wonder whether you have missed some of the important publications 
you can always refer to the reference list of the relevant journals as the reference list will give you the details of the papers that they have cited within their papers. We shall come back to discuss on this later. Let us first try to complete this slide first. After you have done searching and collecting enough of the references for your literature review, then you will start identifying the relevant topics and concepts. You will have to do some screening and filtering of the quality works. We have briefly discussed about how do you screen the quality works. And then you will need to know that the source of publications, whether they are of the primary or the secondary source, from there you can identify the relevant topics and concepts. For a quick assess, in terms of the relevant topics in the fields that you would like to study, some review papers would be helpful to you. At least it tries to give a bigger picture of all the existing knowledge available before its date of publications. By reading through these review papers, you will have an initial understanding in terms of the breadth and the depth related to the research topic. But bear in mind that if you want to use the review article, first the concentration of the information is very saturated. You might find it very difficult to understand. You will have to try your best try to get the heads and tails of the topics being discussed. Your ultimate goal here reading these review articles it's meant for you to get the general knowledge regarding the topics to be studied. And you know that the review articles is in fact a review. There will be components of the critical inputs of the authors. And you need to be critical in terms of the opinions, not to be too guided or directed by the authors. In another words, you have to be careful yourself not to be fully influenced by their review outcomes which might lead to your bias or misconceptions of something. One more thing about these research review articles is that you may think that those review articles are thorough especially when you see quite a long list of the references in the reference section I would say that at least it is more thorough than what you're currently being exposed to at the initial stage. However, those review articles are only able to review the articles which is available before its publication date. Let's say now you are referring to a review article which is 10 years back. You will expect that this review article is unable to provide you any technical insights for those happening after the publications, which happening within the recent 10 years. Therefore, you will have to take note of this. Anyway, the review article is still helpful for you to establish the understanding within the topics that you are studying. Next will be the process where you highlights and make remarks on the important points. The purpose is so that you are able to come back later. You have good record systems for you to trace back the relevant point related to uh, publications. In case that when you need it in future, you can quickly acquire back the relevant publications to study in depth for your research work. This can be done by highlighting the articles. You may highlight the important points within the articles and save it within your database. You will have to work out your own database systems for you to easily trace back the articles. Because you are talking about many many journals papers, it has to be properly organized so that after quite some time, you want to trace back the relevant articles, you can still find your articles within your computer. 
there are a lot of software that can help you to do that one of those is EndNotes which is citing and referencing software and you can easily trace the relevant papers by searching through this software during my time when I studied my postgraduate this kind of software is not that popular then you will have to do it manually by yourself coding all the journals papers that you have in your inventory keeping a list of the references organize it nicely in a folder in your computer so that later if you want to trace back the documents you can quickly find the files in your computer nowadays you don't have to do that you may search online for various kind of the software that can help you to do the task next you will have to have some records and remarks for the important points that you have encountered this could be done by using this literature survey grid which is something like this there will be columns of the topics or the important points and providing you information where those points can be found from different sources of the paper you don't have to do exactly like a grid here sometimes you can do it one to one remarks depending which one you are more comfortable with normally a grid will be helpful because sometimes within a source of publications there are several important points there which at the same time the same points can be found from different other sources then this grid will be quite helpful for you to identify the relevant topics or the relevant sources of publications just that when you choose to use the grid you might have proven that the more papers that you have reviewed the grid become bigger and bigger which come to a state that is difficult for you to manage this one you will have to depend on your own wisdom to come up with a solutions which best suit your conditions so that you can easily trace back what you have encountered with the important points it doesn't matter when this literature survey grid looks messy because at the end of the day you're not going to be presenting it to anybody as these are all the ground words for you for the literature review it is meant for yourself instead of presenting to your supervisors or your research team there are many other ways that you can make highlights and remarks of the important points which you can develop yourself and switch your conditions next it will be organized and synthesized the concepts to have this step trigger first you will have to have sufficient sources in inventory you have identified all the relevant topics and concepts and you have consolidated all the important points now based on the important points that you have consolidated you start to analyze, organize and synthesize the concepts within the field of study this is where you're going to integrate the concepts and also to identify conclusions that can be made from the article groups this may involve grouping and comparison between the articles again everything will have to be centered with the concepts and principles the articles and the authors of the articles is not the main character of the literature review although you have to know who are the authors you have to do proper citations as uh, attributions to the contributions given by the authors this part you will have to have your own critical inputs and it involves a lot of understanding comparison analysis of the points that you have obtained from the literature review so technically this is the sections that you are actually doing the review and also bear in mind that 
these steps of literature review is not just a one-way route. In fact, this process can be continuously looped as from time to time there will be new publications being released and normally your research project will take about 2 years, 3 years or sometimes can reach to 5 to 6 years. Yearly there are so many publications published by different journals and we are expecting that you have done the reviews for the papers which is latest and to date. For example, if you are talking about having your VIVA presentations or submitting your thesis by year 2021, let's say now you are submitting your thesis in the December of 2021, it would be good that you can incorporate the reviews of the papers being published in 2021 as well. Therefore, your database and your literature review grid will increase and expand accordingly whenever there are new publications and your review paper should cover up to the date of your submissions of your dissertations or thesis. Therefore, this is an ongoing looping process where you're going to search, collect the sources and proceed with organizing and synthesizing and then further with searching and organizing and all sorts.